Hello, you are welcome to yet another study session on bus 211 elements of management. We are at study session five. As we have recap of our last study session, we started our discussion on the directing function. We are made to understand that this is a function that is specifically dedicated to the human factor of an organization. It is one session that looks at how you can best influence the employee to perform at acceptable level. During the last study session, we looked at some definitions of the directing function as well as the major components of the directing function. We learned that leadership, motivation, staffing, communication, and supervision are some major components of the directing function. We also learned some definitions of leader and leadership. In summary, we understood that leader has to do with influence, while leadership style has to do with the ability to influence. We also discussed some types of leaders and leadership. We learned that we could have a charismatic leader, that is, a leader that has some likable or charming personalities. We could have appointed leaders, that is, leaders that are selected or picked from among interested persons or from amongst the populace. We also learned that we could have um, traditional leaders. These are leaders that are born into royalty, leaders that are descendants of kings and queens. We also learned that we could also have situational leaders. Leaders that are thrown up based on prevailing circumstances or situation. I gave you a very simple example of the very recent NSAS protest in Nigeria sometime last year where some persons were thrown up as leaders. We also looked at the different types of leadership style. We discussed the autocratic, the democratic, the laser affair or the carefree leadership, leadership styles. We also looked at the paternalistic, the transformational, transactional, as well as the situational leadership styles. These are different leadership styles that can be adopted by the manager or the owner of a business. During this study session, five, we'll be looking at another component of the directing function called staffing. As we got to know from the last study session, we're told and we learned that the human factor, the workforce, is one very significant and indispensable resource of the organization. It is, an, it, is a, it is a resource that cannot be done, that can be not be done without. And so every organization should ensure at all times to always attract and retain the most appropriate in terms of number and caliber of workforce or human resource in the organization. The act or process of doing this is known as the staffing function. This function entails a whole lot of things. We'll get to discuss each one of them through the learning outcomes. This study session, at the end of it, you are expected to be able to define staffing Enumerate and explain the staffing processes or functions. Highlight some importance of the staffing function. Let us start with definitions. Mohammed and Mohammed defined staffing as a function of management that provides the business or any organization with the required manpower. Baturi also defined it as a process of getting the right caliber of manpower into an organization. Now, that word, right caliber, refers to the workforce or refers to the knowledge, the experience, the skills that the workforce should possess or possesses. Fayo described it as hiring and retaining a suitable workforce for the enterprise. 
Mayo on his part defined it as filling and maintaining the right persons in the positions in the organization. On our slide, we could see that an organization is hiring. This thing is gotten from resources.workable.com, where persons it shows that an organization has this is a basic staffing function. Now what are the staffing process or functions? Mohammed and Mohammed and Baturi identify steps as well as functions of staffing to include identifying and estimating human resource requirements, recruitment, selection, placement, induction, and orientation, as well as training and development. We will be discussing each of this process, each of this function, one after the other. Identifying and estimating the workforce or the human resource requirement of an organization is the first basic staffing function of a manager, of a business owner, or of an organization. It entails the organization evaluating or assessing the workforce situation in that organization. That is, understanding the current needs as well as the future needs. There is no organization that is expected to remain the way it is or the way it was established. And so it behoves on the business owner or on the manager to make effort to understand what the current needs, what the current workforce need of organization is as well as what the future workforce needs are. When we're talking about needs, we're talking about the caliber as well as the quantity of human resource that the organization needs. I told you earlier that when we talk about the caliber of workforce or the human resource, we're talking about the skills, the qualification, the knowledge, the experience that this workforce is supposed to possess. And so the organization, the manager or the owner must ensure that they get this right. And this should be dependent on three major items. One, the organizational structure. Two, maximizing or optimizing the human resource. And three, the organizational objectives to be met. The next function or the next step and the staffing function is called recruitment. Most persons, most individuals see this as advertisement. Yes, it is correct. But I would want, to, want us to look at it as the searching and the attraction or stimulating of employees or prospective workforce to apply for openings, to apply for vacant roles. It is usually done by placing adverts through the appropriate medium. This is essential. Every organization is supposed to attract. Every organization is supposed to search for employees, qualified employees. And this can be done by placing adverts through the right medium. For instance, if the role is targeted at the youths, the most appropriate medium in modern times is any of the platforms on any of the social media platforms, such as the Twitter, the Instagram, WhatsApp, Togo, Pala, Telegram, anyone you can name. These are appropriate medium for placing job adverts to get the right use. But then if these jobs or these roles are targeted at people who call the old school or people that are highly experienced. Most times, we use such print medium as the newspaper. Now, we should know that there are two different types of recruitment, the internal and the external recruitment. For every organization or for most organizations, there are policy required that some roles some vacant positions can only be filled by existing employees or by existing workforce. 
this is what is known as internal recruitment. All the organization does is attract existing employees to apply to fill vacant roles. These roles can be filled through promotion or transfer. So only those that are already employees or part of the existing workforce of an organization can apply for these positions. The other recruitment is the external recruitment. This is searching and attracting or stimulating non-existing workforce, people that are not current employees of the organization, to come and take up roles within the organization. So we have the internal, and then we also have the external recruitment. Now, I have some, on the slide, we have um, some um, recruitment adverts. The first one from Pinterest.com shows us an advert on internal recruitment, while the second one from Vengig.com shows opening or external requirement. Sorry, external recruitment. The next stage or the next step in the staffing function is called the selection. Of course, we know that after searching and after attracting and stimulating applicants, we're going to, the organization will have a, full, a pool of applicants. And it is expected that the organization should sieve through this pool to pick out those that are most qualified. And most times, this is done by looking at the paper qualifications and what each applicant has submitted. It begins with the sorting through and sorting the paper qualifications to separate the wheat from the shaft. And then after this, depending on the caliber of employee, the organization can decide to employ some scientific methods such as tests and interview or test and interview. Now, let me point out that there are different rules in organizations. We have highly skilled and highly experienced rules. We have skilled but less experienced or inexperienced rules. We have semi-skilled rules. We also have unskilled rules. Now, each of these rules require scientific methods for speaking or choosing from the pool of applicants. For instance, in the university, or rather at the Center for Distance Learning, we have the lecturers that are skilled, we have other supporting staff that are skilled, and then we have all those that are unskilled. And so, to get these persons appointed, different tests, different interviews are organized, such as um, intelligence tests, aptitude tests, personality test, physical test, depending on the role or the caliber of role to be filled. As you can see on the slide, this is a picture of somebody taking and taking a test to fill a vacant role. This picture is gotten from assessment-training.com. We also have another picture where you have different types of tests going on, as you can see on the slide. Now, after the selection, the next stage is the placement, induction, and orientation. After going through the scientific process, after picking people that the organization feel best fit the vacant rules, these persons are posted through these rules. And immediately they are posted, they are inducted, and orientation programs are organized for them. These programs are done in such a way that these persons will feel at home as soon as possible. It is done to familiarize them with the different policies and happenings and how things are done within the organization. It is done to ease tension. It is done to make them feel at ease at 
or in the organization if it's done to grant them or give them sufficient support that will make them take off immediately. What I have on the slide is the successful candidates or applicants from the selection stages are then posted to occupy the roles they were found fit for. Subsequently, programs are organized to welcome and support them, to familiarize them with happenings and policies of the business. This is necessary to make them settle down as quickly as possible to ease tension. In some organizations, induction and orientation may even come before placement. After the placement comes training and development. Like we said from the beginning of the session, it is all about attracting, it is all about hiring and retaining the most appropriate, the right number and caliber of employees or workforce for an organization. Now, after going through all the stages of identifying and estimating the needs of recruitment or advertisement for vacant roles to be filled for selection and then placement, the next thing is training and development. Training and development has been used interchangeably by a lot of persons. But let me point this out. Training has to do with improving the skills of a person on the current role that person is occupying. Any employee occupying a current role undergoes training to improve his or her skill, to make him or her perform better on the current role. Why development has to do with building the skills and knowledge of the workforce for future roles, probably for higher roles. What I have on the slide is, after the placement, management can decide to organize training during the induction in order to transfer relevant skills and knowledge peculiar to current roles to be occupied by the successful applicants. Furthermore, development refers to the techniques of transferring skills and knowledge for future roles to be fueled by candidates. So far, so good. This, what we have on the board is also another picture of a training and development session going on in an organization. As we can see, there is a facilitator and then you have the employees listening. Importance of staffing. Basically, there are certain advantages or importance of staffing. One is to have the appropriate quality and quantity of workforce in the organization at all times. Because we all agree and we have learned that the workforce, the human resource, the employee of an organization is an indispensable factor. It's a factor that cannot be avoided. It's a factor that cannot be abandoned. So we have to make all efforts to have these employees with the right skills, the right knowledge, the right qualification, the right experience at all times. And all efforts should be made to have the right number of these employees at all times. It will be inappropriate to have less number of employees than required. It is also inappropriate and non-strategic to have more number of employees than required. And so one of the basic advantage of having or undertaking a staffing function is to always have the right number as well as caliber of workforce in an organization. Another importance is building effective human resource. The staffing function helps the organization get the workforce or a human resource that will continue to do things the right way at all times. Furthermore, staffing ensures effective coordination or synchronization of 
the human resource. It also helps in meeting the present and future manpower needs of the organization. Like we stated, one of the very first function of a staffing function is to identify and estimate. And so every manager, every business owner, every organization leader should have the ability or should have a unit that can consistently identify, evaluate, assess the current manpower needs, as well as project the, fu the future needs in terms of numbers, as well as caliber. Lastly, what we have on the slide is optimum and efficient utilization of other organizational resources. A properly carried out staffing function will ensure that the right caliber as well as the right quantity of workforce are available in the organization to enable it or enable them properly handle the other resources. From the beginning of the directing function, we learned that apart from the man that represents the human resource, we have the materials that represent other inputs. We also have money that represents all the finances. And we also have the machines that represent the tools, equipment, and the system in operation in the organization. These three other factors, these three other resources are supposed to be properly handled by the workforce or the human resource of the organization. So far, so good. Through the study session, you have been exposed to another major component of the directing function called staffing. Particularly, you have learned some definitions of the staffing function. You have also learned to enumerate and explain the staffing process or functions, as well as some importance of the staffing function. We have come to the end of our study session five. Thank you very much for listening.